Thing. Order! Order! And you are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! McDonald's says it's run out of milkshakes and bottled drinks in all of its British restaurants due to problems with its supply chain. It's not the only company to be affected. Other major high street chains have also recently experienced shortages, including KFC and Nando's, as well as supermarkets and some manufacturers. While well, our business editor, Simon Jack, is with me. And um, Simon, what's going wrong? There are some cracks appearing in our food supply chains. As you say, McDonald's, Nando's, some people have noticed some gaps in supermarket shelves. But the most chronic shortage of all is people, and in particular in the transport network. Uh, lorry drivers, for example. A number of factors here. Brexit is one of them. We lost 20,000 EU drivers uh, post-Brexit. Exacerbating that was a hiatus on testing new drivers during COVID. You need two people in a cabin to do those tests. That was put back and we've never really caught up. And age. There are far fewer younger drivers joining the industry than there are people retiring. And that's because in relative pay scales, lorry driver, as in how well you get paid, has fallen down relative to other sectors. Now, add that up, we're stretched but coping. However, we are entering the end of the British growing season, which means we will be more reliant on EU imports of fresh produce. And at the same time, new checks come in in October. So industry experts say that means that in the run-up to Christmas, we may see some big challenges. Finally, lots of evidence that lorry drivers are now being valued more than they were. They're the unsung heroes. They're getting better pay and conditions. So ultimately, probably good for them long term. But that means inflation and means we may all face higher food prices. OK, Simon, thank you. Now, first it was Nando's and KFC running out of chicken. Now the British outlets of McDonald's have been hit by supply shortages. You'll still get your Big Macs, but did you want a milkshake with that? If so, as Peter Smith reports, you're out of luck. When the sun is shining and you've come to a McDonald's drive through this is the one thing you don't expect to happen. Two strawberry milkshakes, please. Uh, sorry, our milkshake machine is working at the moment. No milkshakes? No, no milkshakes, sorry. We saw how the McDonald's milkshake shortage was affecting others. Despite it. Uh, what are you going to do now? Maybe probably go. There's an ice cream shop around the corner. Probably go get a milkshake in the ice cream shop. Just got to try and figure it out all by yourself now. That's yeah, yeah. It's a shame. <laughs> so I actually tried to order a milkshake because I always get milkshakes and I come to McDonald's and there's a shortage. How do you feel? Distraught. Distraught? Yeah. All the signs told us something was amiss. We decided to investigate further and eventually our tour of drive throughs in the name of journalism paid off. So the last milkshake's out at McDonald's. Oh, fantastic. This is... Uh, there's a, a supply issue, so like after today, all the McDonald's we broke sold out of uh, so milkshakes. These, these could be the last ones? Yeah, well, until like for 14 days. There is now a serious pattern of shortages though. Nando's closed 45 restaurants because there was no chicken, KFC had to impose menu changes, and now a spokesperson for the Golden Arches is blaming the latest shortage on supply chains. Problems caused by a historic driver shortage added to the problems caused by the Covid cancellation of lorry driver's tests and also Brexit means that we've lost a lot of overseas drivers. We were still holding some of the last McDonald's milkshakes in the country though and so we did the right thing. <gasps> you Thank go. you. That has made my day. Nectar. Nectar? Yeah. I'm the lucky one today. <laughs> With the sunshine. Milkshake. Perfect. Peter Smith, ITV News at your service in Glasgow. Now, McDonald's has run out of milkshakes and bottled drinks in all of its British restaurants. The fast food giant joins other retail and hospitality businesses complaining about supply chain issues. A shortage of lorry drivers, which hauliers say has been exacerbated by Brexit and the pandemic, is being blamed. Our business and global trade correspondent Paul McNamara reports. This is not a story about milkshakes. It's not even a story about McDonald's. It's a story about great big lorries and the people that drive them. Today, this issue has manifested itself with a shortage of milkshakes and some bottled drinks at McDonald's. Last week, Nando's closed some branches after running out of chicken. And KFC also warned recently that supply chain issues meant some dishes were off the menu. But it's all just one issue, not enough drivers. 
How many short are we? Well, according to the Road Haulage Association, 100,000 short. And they say the problems are only going to get worse. Everything we get in Britain comes on the back of a lorry. All the stuff in the factories, all the stuff that we get in the supermarkets, uh, all our retail, everything we order online, it all comes on the back of a lorry. So if there are no drivers, equals no deliveries. And we're in a very serious situation now, and we are heading for big trouble if, unless this is addressed rapidly. So, we're 100,000 drivers short. How? Well, the first reason people in the industry cite is Brexit. According to data from the Office for National Statistics, 14,000 EU lorry drivers left jobs in the UK in the year to June 2020, but only 600 had returned by July 2021. Then there's COVID. Because of the coronavirus, the RHA estimates 30,000 lorry driving tests were missed last year. But that doesn't explain the full 100,000 shortage. To explain the rest of the shortage, it's helpful to look at salaries. In 2010, the average hourly wage of a heavy goods driver was £9.87. By 2020, it had risen to £11.80. That's an increase of just under 20%. Now imagine this driver delivers to a supermarket. Checkout staff in 2010 earned an average hourly salary of £6.51. Ten years later, that rose to £9.29. That's an increase of almost 43%. Now think of the difference between these two lines. In 2010, a driver was earning 35% more than a checkout worker. In 2020, the difference is only 21%. The industry says drivers are getting a rough deal here. It can cost £1,400 to learn to become a driver. The hours can be punishing, much longer than a checkout worker, they say, and the responsibility is huge. And all of that means it's a less attractive job prospect for new people to take up. Unions say now is a once-in-a-lifetime moment to make a change. Pay drivers more, even if it means costs going up. For decades, in fact, pay has been driven down by by the customers, by the manufacturers, by the retailers and others who, who think that transport is an unnecessary cost. Don't get me wrong, we all love a bit of free postage and packaging, don't we? But there's no such thing as free transport. And, and customers, the manufacturers, the retailers need to realise that you can't move things for free. There is a cost and that cost needs to increase, which means that Yes, there may be costs increasing throughout the supply chain, but that means the people working in that supply chain and working in those industries are actually able to afford to live. McDonald's say they're working hard to restore milkshakes and other drinks back to the menu. And the government say they're working closely with the food sector to ensure businesses have the labour they need and they're streamlining the process for people to get their HGV licence. But of course, it can take months to train and get an HGV license. So the solution to the fast food industry's problem may not actually be that fast. Last week, it was Nando's running out of chicken. Yesterday, it was the milkshakes drying up for McDonald's. Tomorrow, it could be chips without fish. The fishing industry is sounding the alarm over food and labour shortages due to Brexit. An industry body said that they're up to 40% short of workers, meaning that there could be a seafood shortage this Christmas if not sooner. Our Scotland correspondent, Kieran Jenkins, has this report. Scotland's fish factories are getting desperate. What is the single biggest challenge facing you right now? Labour shortage. At Whitelink in Fraserburgh, factory manager Scott has dozens of vacancies. We have two cutters there. There's room for ten. They are missing one third of the workforce. What's responsible for the labour shortage you're describing? Predominantly Brexit. Um, you know, the free movement has now been taken away. So for us, that's a big issue. This is messy, unfashionable work. And for years, this industry was almost entirely dependent on EU workers to do it. Even if we was to employ every British national that was available to work in the labour industry, it wouldn't be enough. They need to allow us to take workers in without all the ridiculous red tape. Covid and Brexit. Nobody in this business is unaffected. Many are facing crisis. Now, this programme has seen a survey of the major players in the seafood processing industry and it shows 
just how worried they are. Every business says they've been losing EU workers. One says we lost half our workforce. Another says we have no applications coming in. Another says the outlook is grim. The new rules has made it really, really difficult to be able to take in migrant workers. Jimmy Buchan met the Prime Minister earlier this month to demand on the industry's behalf an exemption from the new post-Brexit immigration system. If not, he warns of product shortages at Christmas, food shortages within weeks. This can lead to shortages of what we would expect on supermarket shelves. This is August. We're going towards Christmas. Christmas is traditionally known as a time of the year where seafood production is in demand. Right now, we cannot supply the demand. Jimmy proudly backed Brexit. Now he just wants a solution. To me, Brexit possibly did not deliver all that we wished for, but all we can do now is point out to the government and the ministers where we think they need to sit down and renegotiate re something that's not working in the best interest of the people of the United Kingdom. The industry insists they're happy to shell out for the right workers, but like many others in Britain just now, they cannot find the staff. Karen Jenkins on the trouble with fish. There was a stark warning from the boss of the Iceland supermarkets chain today about the shortages of HDV and other truck drivers, which is already impacting the ability of retailers to put food and other goods on their shelves. Richard Walker told the BBC he estimated the UK is in need of 100,000 drivers. He called it a self-inflicted wound rather than an inevitable consequence of Brexit. So how can the industry scale up quickly and will it inevitably lead to more expense at the till? Here's our economics editor, Ben Chu. Of all the consequences of the shortage of hauliers, perhaps the most iconic so far is McDonald's milkshakes being taken off the menu. Hello, can I have a banana milkshake, please? Can it really be true? Thank you very much. Well, we've struck lucky. This McDonald's has milkshakes, but what they don't have is any bottled drinks at all. And the problem extends much further than that, of course. KFC and Nando's have been hit by a shortage of chicken. And gaps are appearing on supermarket shelves. The UK supply chain is well and truly in crisis. At Wynn Canton's logistics hub in West London, the general manager is going to unusual lengths to find drivers for delivery vans. We've tried almost every typical type of social media there is. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Indeed, leaflet drops, even on the back of buses. For drivers, we need about 20 a week. And every week, that's a challenge. Every single week, it's a challenge. The government has brought forward a package of measures to alleviate the haulier crisis, including streamlining the process for new drivers to get their licences and increasing the number of tests, which collapsed in the pandemic. Yet ministers have firmly ruled out adding drivers to the official shortage occupation list, something the haulage industry argues is necessary to encourage back many thousands of EU drivers who left the UK during the past year. The government insists people voted to end free movement in the 2016 Brexit referendum. The haulage sector has been reliant on EU immigration, as have others. Before Covid and Britain leaving the single market, EU-born workers made up a large share of some sectors' workforces, 13% in transport and storage, and a similar proportion in hospitality. Construction and retail were also sectors that were reliant on EU workers with just under a tenth of the workforce EU-born. So is immigration the solution to the UK's supply chain emergency? It's striking talking to people in the industry that in the long term, most don't make that argument. They accept that wages will have to rise, conditions will have to improve to attract more UK workers. Nevertheless, in the short term, they are also adamant that this will not get solved, that goods won't get to where they need to go without attracting more EU workers back. It's probably the only measure that will make a significant difference in terms of the supply of drivers uh, in the short term, uh, namely in the next 12 weeks or so. Uh, the other solutions which we can talk about, uh, and we've been working very hard and, and with government on, 
uh, are more likely to take months before they uh, deliver significant amount of, of new drivers into the profession. The government seems to be gambling that the closure of furlough at the end of September will ease the pressures as more workers become available. But the industry insists that's a vain hope and that things will actually get worse soon due to Black Friday sales and pre-Christmas stock building. And some sense a U-turn, with comparisons being drawn with the fuel protests back in 2000, which prompted the then Labour government to scrap planned duty increases. The Prime Minister Blair and the Chancellor Brown were absolutely petrified at the time. And actually, this has got um, sort of similar concept about it. If there's a shortage on the shelves, you know, it was a very similar thing. It nearly brought the country to a halt economically at that time. And in a sort of subplot way, this is doing exactly the same. It needs the government to uh, really start addressing this. Long term, it seems likely the UK's labour market is going to change, and that will have consequences for the pay and welfare of workers. Haulier's pay is already rising extremely fast by some accounts, though from what some see as a low base. The shift will also have consequences for the prices faced by consumers. But for now, the question is whether, as the UK supply chain elastic gets stretched still further in the coming weeks, Britain will, Brexit or not, in the end be forced to seek help from continental workers. Ben Chewell, I'm joined now by Darren Jones, Labour MP and Chair of the Business, Energy and Industry Strategy Committee to discuss the potential implications of ongoing issues with this short supply of goods. Uh, good evening, Darren Jones. Thank you very much for joining us. In if we're talking about the next eight weeks, how do you resolve uh, the critical issues in the next eight weeks? Well, the issue here is that this whole saga was entirely foreseeable. Trade bodies and businesses have been saying this for months, if not years now, before the Brexit uh, transition period. Uh, and ministers have failed to prepare. And now British businesses and British customers are suffering the consequences. Ministers could have put uh, procedures and support packages in place to ramp up the number of HGV drivers available to companies around the country months and months ago, but they have failed to prepare. And once again, I think this is an example of the government leading by a wing and a prayer as opposed to leading with competence. Yes, but in the short term, what is your solution? Because if it's an HG driver, HG drivers need long training. Uh, we're having trouble getting them coming forward because, in fact, the wages are too low. So how do you resolve the critical issues in the next eight weeks leading up to Christmas? The only way to resolve the short term issue, which, as I just said, was created because ministers failed to prepare, is to negotiate a way for, to allow European drivers to come back into the UK market to bolster the number of companies, haulier companies and drivers available to deliver our goods around the country. But ministers have said they don't want to rely on European drivers and they want to rely instead on domestic drivers. Now, that's great if they'd prepared in the first place to make sure those domestic drivers were available, but they'd failed to do that. And so the only answer in the short term is to allow European drivers to be able to come back into the UK economy and to help. But in the longer term, you know, we just heard there in Ben Chu's report, you know, that conditions are going to have to improve. It's very hard to attract people into HGV driving. Conditions will have to improve and presumably then wages have to improve, which is a knock on elsewhere. Well, there's no denying that the, the, the price pressure now is very hot. Drivers are having much higher salaries because there's too few of them. Uh, and that's overinflating perhaps some of the costs that would then get pushed down to consumers. We need a sustainable solution here. I'm all for improving the working conditions of pay of haulage drivers. But what I'm not in favour of is what the government has just put forward by saying that the answer to this is to allow drivers to drive for longer when they're already working long hours as it is. So... We've got an issue here with drivers driving too long hours, drivers not finding the industry attractive enough. But in the long term, we need to build presumably a, 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 a credible and sustained driving population. Because presumably you would agree that relying on European drivers long term is just not an answer for this particular problem. And at the moment, we've got the issue that only bigger employers perhaps would be able to pay uh, drivers and the smaller employers will lose out. 
Well, there are two problems there that you mentioned, Kirsty. The first is, is that as a consequence of Brexit, we don't have the streamlined supply chains across the European Union continent and the UK as we did before. Uh, that's a decision the British government took to take in, in implementing in the way it did with the trade agreement. Uh, that's now not going to be changed. And so we do need domestic drivers, but that requires the government to work with trade associations and businesses to make that happen. They failed to do that so far and they must get on and do it. But you're absolutely right to say that small businesses, corner shops, Shops, high street shops can't afford to pay these inflated prices for their goods to be delivered and only the big supermarkets really and retailers can afford to pay for that so there needs to be a sustainable solution found to this urgently thanks very much indeed